Hello. Uh, welcome to getting content to a phone in less than a thousand milliseconds. Uh, my name is Ian Kerko. I am what I refer to as a back end of front end development. So I do all of the things on the back end to make the front end awesome. That includes DevOps, performance, content strategy, things along that lines. You can find me on Drupal.org at IamCarico, or uh, GitHub at IamCarico, or Twitter at IamCarico, or my website, IamCarico.com. <laughs> Pretty much if it's online, that's my username. Uh, and I work at Four Kitchens. So first of all, what this session is about, uh, it's all about what affects the front end performance, uh, guidelines to better page loading, as well as the protocols that we utilize, things like HTTP, TCP, SPDY, or Speedy, affects our slides. Um, you can find all of these slides. They're all up on GitHub at imcco slash 1,000 milliseconds. Uh, you can also find, I'll tweet this out later, and I'll do it at the end of the uh, presentation as well. Um, so first off, why is this so important that we have fast sites? Uh, Large companies like Google, Amazon, Bing have done many studies into uh, user behavior when sites are fast or if they're artificially slowed down in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we find that when our sites are slower, bounce rates increase drastically. Uh, we have mental context switching happens after about a second. So if a user is looking at their phone and clicks on it and says, uh, yeah, I want to go to this page, and it takes over a second, then instead of thinking about the content on your site, they're thinking about, did I leave the gas on? Or is the oven still running? Or what do I need to get for my girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, et cetera, for Valentine's Day, which is coming up? Uh, there are many countries that are mostly using mobile devices now. Uh, in the United States, uh, I think we are at almost, is it 40% of the internet usage is on mobile devices? Uh, everywhere else around the world, it's much higher than that. I think India is close to 55%. I could be wrong with that. Um, but if we're working with international work, uh, we have to re work with mobile devices. Um, and we can't just rely that 4G is going to roll out everywhere across the globe and solve this problem for us. Uh, there are multiple reasons for this, not least of which is it's not going to happen anytime soon, guys. Sorry. Uh, it's not even all over the U.S. right now. Uh, and um, it won't be enough to solve our problems. So first of all, well, we're going to talk about front-end performance. The first rule that you need to remember, uh, and this is by far the most important rule, is that all of these rules are more like guidelines. <laughs> there are very few steadfast, if you do this, your site will be faster. Uh, the one I always pull out is gzip uh, coding which if you do on your site, your site will generally load faster, except if for whatever reason it would be faster to uh, load in a single packet response, therefore causing uh, unneeded in uh, gzipping, which is a very, very rare stance. But even steadfast rules like gzipping also have their little footnotes of except in certain situations. Um, so with that in mind, test everything. Everything you do needs to be tested. You need to look at, uh, when you're starting to look at uh, upping the performance of your site, do a baseline set of tests, know where you're starting at. So when you start changing things, whether you're aggregation, uh, gzipping, server configurations, what have you, you can see how much it is helping your site or if it's helping at all. Sometimes you might do something you think, oh, this will definitely help uh, the performance and you might find out it actually hurts it in some places. So make sure you are testing constantly. Uh, there are a bunch of tools for this online. You have web page test, YSlow, page speed, Chrome's dev tools, Casper JS. All of these are various tools that can do various different forms of front end testing. Uh, I love web page tests. They can test your site from multiple locations across the globe with multiple browsers and OSs. So you can quickly launch a test that will uh, load your site five times from Chrome in Amsterdam and then another five times with Internet Explorer in New York, and another five times with uh, Firefox in uh, Rio de Janeiro, what have you. So you can test uh, internationally uh, quite, quite simply. 
Um, PageSpeed and YSlow are both browser extensions that you can load up and will give you instant uh, information about things that will help your performance. Uh, the important thing we're talking about testing is that if all of your users are, let's say your entire user base is in Brazil and they all use IE8, do not test from Amsterdam with Chrome because that's not to your user base. Test with what your users are using. So look at your Google Analytics or whatever analytics program you're uh, looking at. Find out what browsers are being used, where they're being utilized from, and test according to that, not according to uh, what other people use. So when it comes to this, uh, every single site will have a different set of testing requirements depending on where your site is and what your user base is. Um, you could easily go into an entire presentation just on automated front-end testing. In fact, Chris Ruppel has done it. And instead of going deeply into all of those tools right now, uh, there's a presentation, uh, and the link's here, it's uh, from DrupalCon Amsterdam called Automated Front-End Testing. Go watch that later, it is fantastic. He goes over all the tools and has great code examples on how to automate your front-end testing uh, to be beautiful. So uh, the first thing we're gonna try to do uh, when we want uh, to load a page fast is to remove render blocking resources. So the idea here is to, at the very least, make it seem like your site is loading very quickly. You might be asking yourself, what is a render blocking resource? It's kind of hard to see, but we have a picture of Gandalf the Grey and the Balrog. <laughs> And the Balrog is trying to get past this tiny little bridge. And Gandalf the Grey is our render blocking resource and saying, you shall not pass. <laughs> it is something in the header, usually. Uh, things like CSS files or JavaScript in the header that the browser will wait until that loads before it loads the rest of the page. So if we have five very large CSS files, before the page will even display, all five of those CSS files need to load. We want to try to eliminate that as best we can. It's kind of the, the technical how this is working. Uh, this is the very basic version of how a browser builds a web page in a browser, uh, courtesy of Ely Gregoric. Uh, so we have our network connection, which we uh, create a um, network connection to the server. And then our network will grab the HTML and our CSS. Out of the HTML, it starts to create the DOM, which I'm sure we're all very familiar with. And from the CSS, it creates the CSS OM um, or the CSS object model or the SOM, as I refer to it as. Uh, it is not until both the DOM and the CSS object model is put together before it will create your render tree and paint anything. So before anything can display on a page, before it goes from white to anything else, you must have both the HTML and CSS. So if we can reduce the amount of time that it takes to get either one of these two files, the better it can be. Uh, there's also, just kind of a, a side note, JavaScript is also in there, but JavaScript will not necessarily block it unless it's in the header uh, of the file without a async or defer tag, which we're gonna get to a little bit later, um, as in right now. So our first thing we do to eliminate these render blocking resources is with JavaScript, move all of our JavaScript to the footer. This is the quickest and easiest way the farther it is in the footer, it won't block our rendering. Everything is happier. Uh, you can also start utilizing async and defer. Uh, they're both actually very well supported. It will, instead of blocking a resource, it will load it asynchronously or defer the execution of the code asynchronously so that it will not block the rendering of a page. Uh, defer is actually fully supported in Drupal 7. Uh, and I, async is not yet. Uh, you can also inline critical CSS. So any CSS that is uh, important that needs to run immediately while the page is loading, or any JavaScript, sorry, that needs to load immediately while the page is loading, just inline it. Don't add it to an external file, put it directly in the file, uh, in the uh, HTML. Uh, to do the moving your JavaScript to the footer and using both async and defer, the magic module does all this magically. Uh, you can enable the magic module, click a single button, and all of your JavaScript will be in the footer immediately. Uh, that includes all of your uh, libraries, jQuery, everything of that nature. Um, there's also an option to leave jQuery and Drupal once and some other Drupal core code in the header, which will be required if you're using a WYSIWYG. Uh, if you're using CAK editor, it's not required anymore. But if you're using WYSIWYG, it will be. Uh, when it comes to CSS, we have a similar idea. Uh, 
we want to inline critical CSS. So any CSS that is required for a user to view the page immediately is uh, inlined. There's a lot of tools to do this. Um, a lot of tools in Grunt and Gulp that can help do this. There are two different ways of um, inlining your CSS. You can either uh, take the CSS that's required to view a mobile size viewport uh, or like anything above the fold and inline that. Or you can also optionally inline uh, manually things that are important, the header, the footer, or the header, the content area, things that uh, are required at the very beginning. Uh, both work fairly well. Uh, the rest of the CSS, we can load asynchronously with something called load CSS. Uh, this will uh, asynchronously load all the rest of the CSS as required for the page after the additional paint has already happened. So you can quickly and easily uh, display a page and then have in the background everything else be loading in. Um, and if you use load CSS, it will still uh, keep it in your browser cache, which is great. There is no out of the drop out of the box Drupal solution for this yet. Uh, I look forward to all y'all contributing something that can do this. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than just moving something to the footer, uh, but there's a lot of grunt and gulp tools that will help with this as well. So uh, if we go back to our here, uh, our little chart here of how the browser builds everything, obviously we need the HTML and CSS, but it's also reliant on the network. The network is the one layer that will always hamper our website loading. So when we're talking about loading a page, we use something called, uh, we use the HTTP protocol, which is based on TCP. Uh, and when we talk about TCP, the issue that is always comes to mind uh, is actually, I use Apollo 13 as a reference, but uh, it's a great scene where uh, Houston is trying to talk to the Apollo 13 module this landing, and they're saying, Odyssey, this is Houston, do you read? And they're waiting a long time because they're a far, far distance away. They're not really saying much, they're not sending a lot of data. It doesn't matter that they need to encrypt this or gzip it or what have you. It's just a matter of that it's traveling a very long distance to the moon and back. So there is a delay there. The same sort of principle applies when we're building website. It's not necessarily the speed of the connection that's the issue when we're building websites. It's the latency. So we have two charts here. Um, our top chart is the page load time for a basic site, uh, and as page uh, and compared to speed of connection, so we have one megabit per second, two, three, four, five. Uh, as our speed increases, we hit a point of diminishing returns. It doesn't necessarily load that much faster once you hit three to five megabits per second. It's, speed isn't a factor here. However, we talk about latency, the amount of time that it takes for a packet to go from a user's computer to your server and back, the more and more we decrease latency, it is a direct uh, correlation to page load time. So the more that we can decrease our latency, we have a direct effect in loading our page faster. Uh, a good way to think about this is a single round trip. If we're talking about a fiber-based connection or Google Fiber. Uh, when a page, a TCP connection is created, you have an initial uh, DNS lookup where it says, okay, I want to go to google.com, what's the IP address for this? It takes about 40 milliseconds, more or less. Then you have a TCP connection is created, so this is when your client goes, uh, your user goes, okay, I need a web page from you guys, and the web page says, okay, what do you need? If you're using uh, TLS or HTTPS, that will add on an extra 600 uh, to 120 milliseconds, depending on how your server's configured, uh, of back and forth of, okay, uh, I want this web page. Cool, this is our security protocol. Awesome, this is my key. Cool, this is our key. Okay, we're good. And then finally, we have the HTTP request where the client can finally go, okay, give me index.html. Uh, and that takes another 60 milliseconds. So all of these round trips, just to grab an initial page or initial response from a server takes between 220 and 280 milliseconds. Not bad. We have a lot of wiggle room to get it under 1,000 milliseconds with that. Our problem is wireless. LTE will take about 100 milliseconds to go from a phone to your server and back. So that 
puts us up to 400, 500 milliseconds just to get an initial response back from the server. With 3G, that's up to 200 milliseconds. So just to get an initial response back, just the server setting back the doc type at the very beginning will take 800 to 1,000 milliseconds. So for us to load a site in less than 1,000 milliseconds on a 3G connection using HTTPS, you have to return the site in the first packet response. <laughs> so there are a lot of ways that we can work with our latency issues. The first and most obvious are content delivery networks, CDNs. Uh, delivery of data is limited by the speed of light. We can't go any faster than that. And generally, fiber optic cable is about speed of light, roughly. Uh, so we're going to put our content closer to the user. Physically closer will make it a little bit faster. Um, so you know, if my user base is in uh, Bogota and Texas and New York City. Have a CDN that has uh, content and servers in New York City, Austin, and Bogota. Don't put one in Amsterdam because that will make it slower. Uh, the other thing we can do is reduce redirects. So we go back to that chart where we have all these back and forth to create an initial connection. Well, if we are redirecting our site to be something else, then immediately that increases by another connection that needs to be made. So I really don't say reduce redirects. We should just remove redirects. Get rid of them as best as you can. Links that get shared out should always be the full address. Um, redirects are very, very bad. Um, and we also would like to respond to everything in the first packet response. So what this means is that we need to respond with an entire complete web page that the site can load with the CSS object model and the, DOM, the HTML in, according to RFC 6928, 10 packets of data, which is about 14.6 kilobytes, including headers. This is our ultimate goal, is to have all of our sites load in the first packet response. Um, a good example of this happening in the real world is my blog, hcbs slash imcareco.com. Uh, will always load in the first packet response, no matter what. Uh, it has a, actually we'll get into all the rest of it, but it loads all of the HTML in line the first time, and every time else it will load it, uh, but it loads everything else asynchronously. Um, we also have some tricks that we can do with HTTP 1.1, or what we are referred to as just HTTP. Um, the first one is called domain sharding. So, uh, a modern browser will create six TCP connections to download files for each domain. So that means it can download six files at the same time, at any point in time. So we grab the index.html, your CSS files, your other CSS files, your other CSS files, your other CSS files. Yes, I know how Drupal does this aggregation. Uh, however, you can kind of beat this by using domain sharding. So having uh, domain www.yourdomain.com, www.yourdomain.com. And although they all lead to the same server, it will mean that the, uh, your browser, instead of having six connections, can have 12 or 18. So if you have a lot of resources that need to load, you can have multiple different domains that will uh, synchronously load all of those files. Uh, we also do concatenation. This is built into Drupal, where we put all of our files together. We, uh, instead of going and getting six files, which will require six TCP connections, will require more and more back and forth, try to send only one which will less latency, less back and forth, faster website. Uh, we also have spriting, which is the same idea as concatenation, except with images, uh, where we put all of our images in a single file, and with CSS, put the correct one in place. So instead of grabbing 20 small files, we grab one big one, which again, cuts down TCP connections, cuts down latency, faster website. Uh, we also have inlining of assets. Instead of loading all of our CSS files with uh, you know, every single file is uh, a single, is an LTCP request, more back and forth, inline the necessary resources. Uh, and the most important thing you can remember is that the faster request that you'll ever make is the one that you don't. If there's something you don't need on your site, you shouldn't be loading it. So if you have, uh, a good example I saw a while back is there was a site that uh, 
loaded like six different sprites for their six different uh, subdomains on every single one of those domains. It was, you don't need to do that. You only need to load the one relative to that domain. So it's because they put everything together that they're making all these extra requests that were never actually shown on the page. Don't do that. Um, these are all tricks with HTTP 1.1, but luckily, uh, Google has been doing a lot of work in what's called the SPDY protocol, SPDY or HTTP 2.0, as it will be called once it's finalized. Um, SPDY, <laughs> 2.0-ish. It's like Speed Racer. It's a lot faster. So Google did a lot of research into uh, how to, all these issues that we're having, why latency is causing such an, an issue, uh, and they created a new protocol called SPDY. And what is it? Uh, it uses uh, multiplex streams. So this is a fancy way of saying, uh, with HTTP 1.1, we have to create a new TCP connection for every file that we want to use. Instead, it reuses the same TCP connection and downloads everything in a single stream. So instead of having to create six connections and go back and forth six times to create all those connections, it will use a single connection, thus reducing the amount of latency that's required. Uh, and the multiplex streams will allow multiple files to go along the same uh, connection. Uh, because everything's going along the same connection, it also allows for request prioritization. So you can say main.css is more important than trivial.css. Uh, and it will make sure that main.css always loads first over anything else. My favorite part, it allows for uh, currently when we are loading a web page with HTTP 1.1, uh, the server will go, okay, give me index.html. It will grab it. It will start parsing it and go, okay, I need uh, main.css. And it will say, okay, I need main.css now. With Speedy, instead of uh, the client always having to go and request assets, the server can push it. So it can say, here is index.html, and you're also going to need main.css and scripts.js. And it will start sending that along without another need for a full request being made. Uh, it also removes redundant headers. So if you've ever looked in Chrome and looked at the headers that are sent back and forth between the server, that's extra data that's being uh, sent back and forth, Speedy will change that by only sending headers that have changed. So if you all have the same headers of this is my you know, cookie or what have you, it doesn't need to be sent back and forth every time. It will only be sent once. Uh, it also compresses the headers. So there's basic Gs of compression to make sure that headers are compressed, therefore less data a little bit faster. Uh, certainly with HTTP 2.0 uh, slash speedy, we're going to have you doing different tricks than we would with HTTP 1.1. Um, do not use domain sharding. <laughs> You're going to find a trend on this one. Uh, because we're using a single TCP connection, it will actually hurt your speed if you are sharding domains. Because instead of using a single TCP request, we're going to be creating more and more. With speedy, you can uh, utilize only one. Uh, concatenation can hurt performance. So uh, this was kind of a, a mind boggle for me when I first heard it. But if you're concatenating all your files together, and let's say one of your files gets changed fairly frequently because it's code that's being altered on the site by developers every day, and you're concatenating your files, then every single time one of those minor changes is made, the whole file will be sent over and over and over again. With Speedy, it's better to leave all your files separate because then you know, jQuery, which will never change, will always be cached, always be stored, while, you know, your scripts for this one slider that you're using on your homepage, which changes every single day because the client can't make up their mind, can change all at once and it'll only send a small bit of data. Uh, you can also start using server push for important assets, so things that are required, uh, CSS files, JavaScript files, things of that nature, can be immediately pushed to uh, the client. Uh, that last bit, I've been trying to uh, figure out if a speedy module would be a good idea or not, uh, and it's in research. I'm thinking it will probably hold off till Drupal 8 to do, uh, because speedy isn't going to be a protocol that we're all using probably for another five years. <laughs> um, you think Drupal 8's taking a long time to get out. Uh, so a, a case study to kind of look into all of these things working in Unity is httpsimcareco.com. That's my blog. Uh, so it uses Speedy uh, to deliver everything. It has a custom CDN. Um, 
it's a long story, and I wrote a blog post on why it has a custom CDN, but I, none of the rest of the CDNs that I want. Uh, but it has servers in Singapore, Amsterdam, and New York. And once uh, DigitalOcean opens a server in Latin America, I will do it. But I can't afford anything but that. Um, all the DNS has been moved to Route 53, so that Route 53 will uh, send each user, depending upon their location, to the correct server. Uh, it inlines all of the critical CSS, actually all of the CSS, on the first page load. Uh, and then it will load the rest of the CSS asynchronously. Uh, the results, uh, last time I checked, the page speed score was 98. The Y slow score is 98. Uh, Pingdom gives me a score of 93 with sub 500 milliseconds load time, and web page test loads between 400 and 800 milliseconds load time. Uh, very fast, no matter where I put it across the globe. Uh, so what's next for that? Never stop improving. There's always going to be changes, new ideas, new techniques. Um, there are a lot of great people doing some great work to speed up sites a little better. Uh, Finally, one, one question I haven't asked a decent bit is who is actually responsible for performance in a team? Uh, who is it that needs to bear this burden and make sure that everything is performance on a site? Um, and the answer really is everyone must think about it. It can't be something that's an afterthought. It can't be something that is, uh, oh, this in the last three days of the project, we're going to fix all the performance issues. Uh, that's going to be a nightmare. Uh, so really, the, the entire team must have the data to be making the right choices performance-wise. Um, what this, uh, well, then the, the performance expert, whoever that is, needs to give the right information to the team. If they need to give them, OK, designer, uh, you need to know that if we load this uh, image that is uh, 500 megabytes on the home page that changes every page load, it's going to be a terrible idea. We need to you know, load smaller image sizes, things of that nature. Um, but also, go back to our automated testing slides. Of Automated testing needs to be set up where everyone can see the impact of the decisions that they've made on the code immediately. Where on a merge to master something, uh, automated tests can run from web page tests or pingdom or what have you that can say, oh no, in this last commit, our performance went from uh, you know, loading in 800 milliseconds to now it's two seconds. Like We need to reevaluate what happened here and look back at it. But everyone needs to have that data and be able to do it so that they can know when the decisions that they're making are affecting the performance of the site. Um, and really, it comes down to it needs to be easy. It needs to be something that every developer can run a grunt command, a gulp command, uh, go to their Jenkins server, or whatever you have set up for CI, or are going to set up for CI after this presentation, and can click a button and see this is what's going on right now. It can't be something that's difficult or no one's going to be using it, and then all of a sudden we're going to have a, a hundred megabyte JavaScript file. I don't even know if that's possible. Um, and with that, are there any questions? Fantastic. I'm going to hand off the mic so that we can record this. Thank you. Well, uh, talking about the speedy protocol, uh, what do you think is going to happen to the AJAX calls? You know, because when when I'm talking about performance using HTTP 1.1. Um, most of AJAX calls are not on, during the page load. They, they're, they're made after that. And what do you think uh, is, is going to be the future or the next steps when loading AJAX calls uh, not simultaneously, simultaneously? I don't know. Uh, and still get uh, the full performance from Speedy? Um, I don't think there's going to be a difference. And, and here's why. Because Ajax calls will happen after the, the base bit, uh, as long as you're using the right the same domain, it will use the exact same TCP connection. So uh, Speedy will keep your connection alive uh, for a good amount of time, provided your server is set up correctly. Uh, so really, it'll, it it won't uh, it will only make those requests a little bit faster because you won't need to create a new TCP protocol. But again, going back, make sure you're using the same domain. Uh, if you're using a bunch of uh, AJAX requests to five different domains after your page load, those are going to be slowed down dramatically every time. Uh, uh, thanks for the presentation, uh, really good. 
I was wondering about your website, uh, IamCarico.com, because um, you know I load it, and of course it's super fast. But then you have no images. Your fonts are very few. <laughs> your CSS is very <laughs> basic. You have like almost no header, and uh, you know I I wonder you know how. How would be if you have a very different example? You know, something like loaded with images, a lot of styles, big header, you name it. I love this question because every single time I give the presentation, someone points it out immediately. Um, you're right. Uh, I am not a designer. Uh, I actually did a lot of work to make sure my web fonts are loading very fast. Uh, they're part of the reason why I use my custom CDN. Um, however. There are a lot of things you can do. So if you look at the first response, it's still sub uh, eight kilobytes, I think, which actually gives you a lot of wiggle room. Um, I've been working on the Four Kitchens website to do a, a similar thing. Uh, ironically enough, web fonts are what's holding me up right now uh, because they're weird. However, uh, as long as what you're doing is called with Ajax uh, and loaded asynchronously, you can do the exact same thing. So the same principle still applies. It's, uh, the reason I, I show my blogs is a relatively simple example of all of these principles in play. Um, but you know, load your JavaScript asynchronously. Load your images asynchronously. Load your ads. This is a big one. A ads should always be loaded asynchronously. Images are already loaded uh, asynchronously. Your page load will not be uh, altered if you're loading a bunch of images. Um, so while it is a simple example, the, the principles still directly apply. Um, and there's still a bunch of tools out there that can help you do the same thing. Um, but yes, it is hard to do it, especially on a big Drupal site. I understand. So just curiosity, you said your site is already using the Speedy. Uh, does it require a special library, J JavaScript, or plugin on the browser? How does it work today? Uh, not at all. So uh, Chrome and Mozilla both support Speedy out of the box. Um, the server has to be set up specifically. Um, so I'm using Nginx with Speedy built into it. Um, and a lot of things aren't finished in the Nginx version, so I don't have server push movements yet, because when I built this, it wasn't part of the Nginx extension. It's shockingly not that hard to set up. And it will default to uh, regular HTTP 1.1 uh, HTTPS if it, uh, the browser doesn't have it. So there's uh, a really smart protocol to make sure that it's loading as, as fast as possible. Um, it's uh, if you are have your own infrastructure, it is really simple. Both Apache and Nginx have extensions to use Speedy right now, um, and they're both very well featured, actually. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Okay. Oh. So we we recently uh, implemented CDN. And, uh, and, and I really like what you say at the end, uh, you know, who is responsible for this? Because we get a lot of pushback from the editors in our sites. They want the biggest, hugest picture that they can find and the, you know, super 10 megabytes videos and et cetera, right? So it's a lot of times it's always pushback. And we implemented the CDN. We put a lot of work. It, we pay for it, right? Yet the, the in, you know, the speed it, and or the inc incre the increment in the loading performance was not that we expected, right? And we, I mean, we fine tune and fine tune, and finally we perhaps way you know gain twenty percent speed, something like that. So at some point I was wondering, you know, is is to what extent you you invest so much on that, and if you go like all the way with Akamai, right? <laughs> yeah, ten thousand dollars a month for the CDM, perhaps. So, you know, is it is it worth it? How do you balance that out? So, I mean, obviously that's a, a business question of what is it worth. Um, I always look at it as what is the distance between you and your users. So, if all of your users are in a single country, um, there isn't going to be much of a gain by using a CDN. Um, the biggest gain that you're going to get is generally CDNs are set up to be a lot faster response time. But if you're using something like, say, Pantheon or uh, Acquia's hosting, they're actually set up to do that already as well. So you're not going to get a huge performance boost. Where you get huge boosts is when your uh, uh, your audience is 
in geographically diverse locations. So if you have an international audience, then it's a, a huge boon. Um, uh, there are, I'm trying to remember, there's a, a, a site I used a while ago of looking at the ping times between servers. And it is shocking how long it takes to uh, a ping to go from New York to Australia. Because you're crossing three oceans to get there, usually. Or a country, an ocean, and a sea to get to Australia. It's a long distance. Like, no matter what, that is going to take some time, even going literally at the speed of light. You're totally right, because if we look at the numbers overall, you don't see the impact. But you know, I'm looking at, for example, the, our numbers in South Africa. In the, in, in the latency, we went from 300 milliseconds to 3 milliseconds, yeah. because there is a server right there in Cape Town. Yeah. And yeah, of course, in the overall picture of the, our analytics, it doesn't look that much, because we have a lot of traffic from the states. So. Awesome. Any more questions? Bueller? Bueller? OK. Um, then as final thoughts, oh, no, what did I just do? <laughs> OK, that was weird. Uh, Ilya Rigoric, who is a performance engineer for Google, has a fantastic uh, book on web performance. Go read it. Uh, it goes into all of the protocols and like why what we do matters. It's fantastic um, and isn't a very hard read. He does a great job. Um, my slides, again, are at imcco. Uh, slash 1000 milliseconds. Uh, they're also, also on GitHub, so you can go to my GitHub, imcarico. They're all there. Um, and thank you. Thank you very much.